The Charlotte Podcast Festival is presented by Blumenthal Performing Arts, the Queen City Podcast Network, Eclex Creative Agency, and WFAE, Charlotte's NPR news source. The home of acclaimed podcast, Charlotte Talks, She Sets, The List, Amplifier, Southbound, and FAQ City. Learn more about WFAE and our latest podcast, Work It, at WFAE.org. Welcome, welcome to the Charlotte Podcast Festival. Hope you're doing great on this Tuesday. My name is Perrine DeShield, and for the first time of the Charlotte Podcast Festival, I'll actually be your moderator and one of your speakers. Look at that. Just look how things work. Um, I'm super duper excited to be here with you guys. Um, this is our third week of the Charlotte Podcast Festival. Um, we are super duper excited to have you here with us today. And so um, just really quickly wanted to remind you all that this is Charlotte's first ever podcast festival. We are presenting this festival to you by WFAE, which is Charlotte's NPR news source, as well as Queen City Podcast Network, Blumenthal Performing Arts, and my agency, Eclex. So we're super excited. We're pumped to be here. This session, we're going to actually talk to you all about how to use your podcast graphics and visuals to stand out. Because everyone doesn't want to blend in in a see a podcast, right? You want to be out there. You want to look fabulous. You want to get the word out. And we're here to do that. We're here to pump you up and to really promote that. So first up, I want to introduce you all to my fellow presenter. All right. So Lisa Spear is the creator and host of the Branding BFF podcast. Lisa's the founder of the strategic branding company Spearhead Solutions and a sought after speaker on all things branding. Branding BFF captures candid conversations with entrepreneurs about the essential roles um, branding plays in their business's success. Spearhead Solutions uses brand strategy as the foundation to help new businesses create their brand and existing businesses strengthen their brand so they can attract their ideal clients and shorten their sales cycles. Whether podcasting, public speaking, or working one-on-one -on -one with clients, Lisa takes the mystery out of branding. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's bigger than your logo. All right. So let's, yes, Lisa, let's have a round of applause for Lisa Spear. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to be co-hosting with you. Yes, Lisa. That was like my really whack attempt at trying to like sound like a screaming crowd. Hopefully it kind of sort of maybe worked. Who knows? <laughs> But yes, that is Lisa. We're going to get to Lisa very shortly um, with this presentation. Um, again, I am not only your moderator, but also one of your presenters. So it's kind of weird because I'm going to be telling you about myself a little bit. Okay, cool. Let's roll with it. So again, I'm Perrine DeShield. I am a first-generation Liberian-American and an avid podcaster. So I've created, edited, marketed, produced, and co-hosted two podcasts. So my first baby is called First Gens. It's a podcast about being a first-generation American and filling in the blanks besides hyphen. Second podcast is called The Quarantine Couch. Pretty self-explanatory, I'd like to say. And I've taught a few podcasting workshops all in between. So in addition to working full-time with Belk Headquarters for the past six years, community means so much to me. It's a big priority of mine. Um, I'm on a few different boards and stuff here in the Charlotte community, and I am an advocate for all creatives. So for the past few years, um, well, actually for maybe a smooth decade or two, I've been helping family members and friends grow their passions through marketing and branding and more. And so through all of that, I created my own agency called Eclex, back in November of last year, pre-pandemic, and really got the ball rolling and expanding it more so back in March. And so Eclex, our main mission is to help unique artists, fellow creatives, and small businesses tap into their purpose and to grow. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm super duper, again, hyped and excited to talk to you guys here about, again, the power of graphics, marketing, branding, and more. So we're going to look forward to answering audience questions. So we do ask that you keep your audio muted. We will ask that you keep it muted throughout the entire session, um, but we will be taking questions for this session at the end of the session, okay? So hold on to your question. Um, we'll get to it as soon as we can once we wrap up the presenting, okay? 
Um, this is another reminder for you. This session is going to be recorded. It's being recorded right now. You're going to receive it in your email this month. So make sure that you check your email, make sure it's not in your spam, it's not in the junk and whatnot. It's something that you definitely want to hold on to in the future, something you can look back on as a resource and all of that good stuff. Um, so we also encourage you all to check out the full list of all of our sessions for the Charlotte Podcast Festival on our website. Yes, the charlottepodcastfestival.com website. Yes, there you can learn even more about our upcoming sessions, our past sessions. Um, and you can also be reminded to use our hashtag. Yes, millennials, we, we love a good hashtag. CLT Podcast Fest. All right. So make sure that any little nuggets you learn here today, anything that you gather from this entire festival, share it on social media. Let all your friends know what's going down in the Charlotte Podcast Festival. All right. So you can also support the festival by going to our website and purchasing a t-shirt on um, this beautiful t-shirt. Yes. Created by local Charlotte creatives. All right. So with all of that being said, let's get started. Let's Let's get into the meat while you're here. All right, so I'm gonna get started on our first presentation. All right, so again, today we're gonna be talking about how you can use podcast graphics and visuals to stand out, all right? So again, this week, we're talking so much about marketing and branding and really getting your podcast to the next level and expanding it. All right, so first things first, all right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about what a brand first impression is. It's gonna be your artwork, it's gonna be your logo, okay? So just a few like things to break down, a few specifics, right? When you, I'm sure you know what your favorite podcast graphic looks like, right? Um, it's typically gonna be a 3000 pixel square. Um, you want it to be simple easy to remember and easy to explain. Um, definitely should connect with what your podcast is about. You want it to be eye-catching. You want to have your show's title. Um, you want it to be consistent, um, consistently used in the future. And you want it to be transferable onto various platforms, okay? So both social media and merchandise. So those are things that I like to keep in mind when I'm working with podcast clients. That's something that I like to just keep in mind with any new podcast that I'm creating. And I wanted to show you all a few examples that are very different, but they have a really strong brand identity, okay? So The Read, one of the first podcasts I ever listened to, shout out to The Read, it's going about like nine years strong, which is like, again, huge in podcast world. But what's really cool about what Kid Fury and Crystal did with their artwork is they have, you know, cartoon kind of animated drawings of themselves. Um, and they have transferred this into stickers, into t-shirt, just like all kinds of different merchandise and products. Um, so it's one of those things that when you see that coral color, when you see those, you know, icons of their faces, you instantly, you know, think of their podcast. And that's really important. That brand recognition is very vital. Next, you have This American Life. Shout out to This American Life, like the OG of OGs, right? They have archives on archives, episodes about everything. Love This American Life. This is their actual second logo that they've created. So they've actually kind of made some changes over the years. So they're going more so with a serif font that's just classic and clean, but they also included this kind of icon. So it's the American flag, but it's kind of mixed in as like a little like talk bubble, right? So what's cool about this logo is that it can be broken up. It can use that icon, you know, on its own on, you know, merchandise and just a variety of different things as an icon, but then obviously, you know, they have their standalone just kind of logo text, right? Cool. So then you have Dissect. Any Dissect fans out there? Put it in the chat. Um, I love Dissect. Dissect is one of Spotify's original podcasts. And the cool thing about Dissect is that every single season, they cover a different impactful musical album, right? In every single season, they change their artwork. <laughs> it's a lot, it's extra, um, but I appreciate it in that sense because it's almost giving you a little clue before the season starts what their subject matter is going to be. So this sunflower you see here represents their season that was about Tyler, the creator's Flower Boy album, okay? But what stayed consistent and what remained the same is their text logo that still says dissect, all right? 
cool. So th that's a different, you know, kind of way that you can get really creative with your artwork um, season by season if you want to. But again, that consistency with that text, that's that brand recognition you want to keep. So first gens in the quarantine couch, those are my two babies. Um, you know, with first gens, like when you think about a barcode, that was something very symbolic to me personally. Um, when you think about a barcode, it's something that scan that gives you all of the details and information about a product, right? It's one of those things that can allow you to gain insight and knowledge about where something derived from. And so as a first generation American, um, being made in America, but being filled with, you know, components of my parents' culture and so many other things that made me who I am, I felt like a barcode was symbolic to that. Um, it's something that looks great on merchandise. <laughs> it's something that looks super cute as a sticker and all the things. So again, um, you kind of want to think about, you know, your logo and your artwork in that sense, okay? All right, so next episode graphics, all right? So what we want to remind you about different episode graphics that you post on social media, um, episode graphics that you just have on the different platforms to promote your podcast episodes, you want for that to always be connected to your brand, okay? So you never want to lose sight of your brand in any kind of graphic that you create. Lisa's gonna elaborate on this a little bit more in our second part of the session, but it's just important to create somewhat of a graphic structure, you know, keep it consistent, stick to a theme, um, and you can even, if you don't have, you know, a ton of, you know, high quality or high res photography, usually your iPhone works just fine, that Android works just fine. But if you don't have the time to go out and do a photo shoot that might align with the subject matter of your episode, we really want to present, you know, different resources for you, such as unsplash.com and pixels.com. So both of these websites are free um, royalty-free stock photography that you can use, right? These different websites have just an entire library and archives of, you know, photography on a variety of different subject matters. So it's really, really helpful. It's really useful um, to make sure that that visual connects to, again, that episode content for any graphics you make. Um, partner with a graphic designer. We're not trying to tell you guys to do a crash course on Photoshop or on InDesign if you can't, okay? You know, know your lane, know your role, but if you can partner or freelance or contract with a graphic designer who can help you bring that episode vision to life, whether it's animated or photography, you know, we really do like, you know, promote that, right? And we encourage you to do so. So um, if you do have some time and you're like, let me take up a new skill and try this out, I love Canva. Canva is everything. Canva is what I've used to create these graphics um, and graphics and flyers. Basically, any kind of graphic, um, you can make it on Canva from business cards to just anything, okay? So make sure that you definitely check that out as well. All right, so social graphics, okay? So again, just like your episode graphics, you want your social graphics to be consistent as well, right? You want them to also stick to a theme. So you want to integrate, you know, similar brand themes into still graphics. And if you want to get fancy with it, video graphics or MP4, you know, graphics as well. So what I really love, there's another website that's really easy to use, um, especially for podcasters. Let's say you've gotten a 15 to 30 second clip um, from one of your episodes that you want to now integrate into a graphic. You can use a website, a free website like Soundwise. So this kind of graphic you see here in the middle that says season three, the trailer, and you see that kind of audio wave in the middle. Um, that's actually a graphic that moves. You'll see that audio um, wave move and you'll hear that selected 15 or 30 second audio clip that I just mentioned. Um, and sound wise, they go ahead and they generate it for you. All you need is that visual graphic and you need that audio clip. You go to sound wise, again, they connect it for you. Um, if you want to be, again, super fancy with it, um, something that, you know, I have a background in editing um, and I'm lucky to have people on my team and my boyfriend who also knows how to do video editing. And so we've created, you know, different um, kind of animated videos and whatnot on our social media as well. 
but they all keep that same consistent look and feel, right? So our uh, more recent season of First Gens was about the complexities of complexion. And so that's something that we kept the same, right? That you can see um, kind of that same kind of gradient um, of different shades. That was something that we wanted to keep consistent with the branding for that season, right? All right, so lastly, let's, let's do a very, very, very quick demo on Canva. Talked about it, now let's, let's be about it. And if you have questions, again, make sure we're gonna get to those in the chat. So bear with us. And if you've used Canva before, also put that in the chat because I want to know. Let's see, hold on one second. There it goes. All right, so when you come to Canva on the home screen of Canva, you are given this amazing search bar that says design anything. And I know you're probably thinking, oh my God, anything I can design anything. Honestly, like they really do have a million different templates that you can use to design almost anything, all right? You can search it here and find different graphics. But since we're talking about the lines of podcasting graphics, I would go more so to like an Instagram post or an Instagram story. Um, again, they have animated kind of graphics, they have posters, they have all of these things. Um, but I do also wanna show you all this graphic, right? So this is one that you just saw in the deck. So this is a graphic from Canva that I took and I just kind of tweaked the text to kind of exemplify what my season is, what my episode is. This can be changed to whatever I want it to be. Um, it can be, changed for like the actual typeface, the color can be changed. Um, and I can make it pretty much anything that I want to using the different like tools here on Canva. Um, something yeah, else that's bag. really great about Canva is that you can upload photos um, that you have um, on your own like desktop or anywhere saved on your computer and kind of add it to your graphic. So let's see, if I click here and I highlight this photo, I can look here on all of these different photos that I have uploaded and saved. I can drag it in. Let's see. All right, so my picture's being a little weird right now, but all you have to do is just kind of drag whatever photo that you would like into that square and it'll populate. My internet's being a little weird. I apologize for that. But the main kind of thing that I wanted to kind of share with you guys is that Canva is super customized um, opportunity and a great platform that you can use for your graphics um, and any other marketing and branding things that you have for your podcast. So I hope that you gained some insight there. Um, I'm done with my portion of the session. I want to turn over the reins to Lisa Spear, who's gonna talk to you all a little bit more about branding and go more in detail and more in depth. And if you have any questions, again, save them for the end. Um, but if you have something burning, I'll make sure to try to get to it in the chat. All right, Lisa. Excellent, I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay. So in addition to um, talking about our podcast, a lot of times people are developing a podcast because it ties to something else that they're already up to, whether it's a business, they have a personal brand, or they have a passion project. So I wanted to just start with, let's be aware of that, and let's go through a few pieces, and then we'll get into some really clear branding examples. So you may be wanting to use your podcast to raise the visibility of your business, you may want it to demonstrate your expertise and your pa and or passion around a particular topic. Uh, you might wanna use your podcast to help people know, like, and trust you and or your business. 
uh, you might want to actually do the opposite where you leverage your podcast to actually launch a business. I know somebody who's in the process of that right now. Uh, you also may want to build a name for yourself, develop a personal brand, um, whether it's you as a host of the podcast, but you're also looking to build you know, a bigger personal brand for yourself, getting some name recognition. So the thing here is to think about being intentional and connecting the dots. And I'll show you a few examples of this. But we'll, let's start with what the connections might be before we even think about what it looks like. So the connections between your podcast and whatever the thing is, right? Your business, your passion project, or your personal brand. You may have a common goal. You may have a topic in common. They might be part of the same brand. You might have them coexisting on the same website because there is something that really ties them together. And you'll probably come up with some of your own ideas on this too. But going back to the brand. So with your brand, if you were at my session yesterday, we talked a lot about how your brand is not just what something looks like. It's the visual, which is key. It's what it looks like, the colors, the fonts, the photography, or the illustrations, like some of the examples that uh, Perina has shown. It's also verbal. So it can be like your name, it can be your tagline or your hashtags, all these things exist in that verbal realm. And then the, it's the experience that the people in your audience or your clients have. Um, these all exist as part of your brand. So if we think about potentially connecting your podcast to something else you have going on, we want to be thinking about the goals, but we also want to really be thinking about these three areas, the visual, the verbal, and the experiential, because they are the things that make up your brand. Your, of course, your podcast graphic, that's like, as Preen said, your first impression, right? That's vital for someone to see it in the field of all, you scroll down, you see all those little podcast graphics, you want yours to stand out. But we also want to be thinking about those other pieces too, how you name it, how it reflects with uh, your goals. So I'm going to show you some really um, specific examples that I developed with clients. Because I have a strategic branding business and I also have my own podcast, um, I actually got into this thing where I was working with clients on their brand and their business. And then once they started to want to create their own podcast, I was able to actually um, take that knowledge about their brand and their business or their passion project and actually make sure that their podcast connected in the way that worked for them. So with Blue Skies, um, that was the name of their business page of their website, their brand, but then they also were building a podcast around it. It was all these stories that heal. Um, so we kept a lot of visual connections, the name connection, um, some of the photography on the website connected as well. It all had to do with showing blue skies in every single photo. Um, the next one was a passion project for a client of mine. Sure, her, her whole goal is around making theater approachable and inspiring. So the website had to do with um, tools for that, public speaking and so forth. And that's also the same place where she housed her podcast. Yes, it was still on Lipson, um, but she also had a player that we added to her website that she could actually show all the podcast episodes. So the thing we did differently, you can see, is we added the phrase theater talk. Um, we wanted to make sure that people don't know what Entrance meant yet as a brand for a business or a, a passion project. But in trance, you get the idea that um, you're going to be captivating people in your audience by the content and by the, the theater itself captivates and entrances people. So we made sure that in this case, it was an illustration, not photography. So this was a case where we were able to actually leverage her daughter was an artist. So we got to pull in that custom artwork. Um, no one else has anything like that. So that helped make her brand extra special. It helped made it really unique and definitely um, very specific to her. Um, family law firm, we rebranded her business. She had been with a partner. It was all under the last names. You know how law firms are, lots of last names. Uh, but they were splitting and he was retiring and she was creating her own law firm. So we rebranded it. Um, and then when she created her podcast, we actually thought about, okay, 
how do we want to communicate the podcast and that connection? So we referenced it, as you can see, in that same color bar at the bottom, but we created a new graphic for the top part where the name of the podcast is actually Welcome to Splitsville. Think about a lot of her clients. Well, they're getting, many of them are unfortunately getting divorced or separated. So the podcast actually helps both support her business, but it actually gives people tools to understand a little bit more about what to expect and different topics that might be of very real need for people before they actually reach out to hire um, a family law attorney. So you can start to see that there's some real connections by theme, by topic, um, and how the podcast would actually support her business goals. And then um, Leslie, she has her, her business is coaching and consulting. Um, her brand was built for her business around her name. She didn't actually want to create um, a name distinct from her. So she's operating as her name. Uh, the reason why I'm sharing this one is for people who have a personal brand. Uh, they might be operating under their name, but they don't have a business and they're maybe doing something as a hobby or a passion project. In her case, it is a business. And then her whole focus with her business is around empowering women in the corporate environment. Well, what she did for her podcast is she brought in a man and her philosophy is men plus women equal better business. Let's not just have women work on themselves and uh, kind of try to break through that glass ceiling. We need men to do that together and we can work on this objective together. So the podcast was her and her co-host who was a man uh, breaking down some of these topics. And then next is uh, my business. So I have, in this case, you're gonna see uh, uh, some color differences and some font differences, but the business came first, the podcast came second, and I also trademarked, um, trademark registered the name Branding BFF, both for my podcast and for a service offering. So I have a very specific group training and coaching program uh, that I offer that uses the name Branding BFF. All the other strategy and design services I have, they're sp very specific just to the Spearhead Solutions. But in this case, you know, the, the common thread, what's more important than the color or even the logo, because they are distinct, I would say Spearhead Solutions is the brand and then the branding BFF is the, the co-brand or the sub-brand underneath it. Uh, but what was most important is that branding is the topic that's in common. Um, it's the thread that weaves between all of them and it can help me uh, create a bigger audience uh, for people so I can help demystify branding, not just for the people I'm working with, but the people who may choose to work with me. So you can start to see how the elements of your brand, there's the visual, there's the words, there's the, um, the experience people have. Like one of the things I consciously chose to do in my podcast was to make sure to have really candid conversations with entrepreneurs so that people would realize it's branding the way I work is a collaborative process. So I wanted the podcast to be a very collaborative process as well. So these are parts of the experiential, how I was referencing at the beginning. So the other thing to think about is if we're thinking about connection, right? We're talking about maybe connecting your podcast to something else, um, the brand or the theme or the goal. Um, your guests may be another connection point for you as well. Your guests, if you have guests on your podcast, could become your, they could be existing clients you've had. They could be complimentary businesses if you are uh, using your podcast to support your business and to help market your business. It could be people that you respect who you feel like will add value to your topic. Um, and it can also be people you want to build a relationship with. So for example, um, I use my podcast graphics for the initial episodes um, with the guest to make sure I use their photo. I'm showcasing them. I'm showcasing our conversations together. So I still have my brand at the bottom. But what I'm doing is I'm using their photo because I'm wanting them to be um, really like part of the star of the show. And what it also does is when you actually use podcast episode graphics, particularly the way it helps you is in your social media. So you think about who doesn't want to show like, hey, I've been on this podcast. People are recognizing my value. They want me on their podcast so that you know they, I can share my expertise or my insights. And so it actually helps you grow your audience by using podcast episodes graphics 
for your social where other people are, people are involved because they're going to be excited to share it. So the recap of all of this is, you know, your brand is bigger than your logo, um, but you want to start with the goal and think long term, the goal for your podcast. Does it connect to something else beyond your podcast? Um, if there is a connection, how can you connect it with the visual, the verbal part, and the experiential parts of your podcast to your other thing, whether it's the business, the passion project, or your personal brand? And lastly, if there is no connection, don't force it. All we're sharing is like opportunities to see how your podcast might tie to something bigger that you're up to and help your brand and your graphics uh, help connect that. But there may be times where they just need to be separate entities. You're actually um, on two different paths and they don't intersect. So I know we have a ton of questions. Um, so here's my contact information while we're going through the questions. It's gonna be a combo of uh, Perrine, Perrine and myself. So I wanna make sure you're unmuted, Perrine. Yep. Yes, everyone, we're super excited. Um, so yeah. make sure that if you do have a question, make sure you put it in the chat. So we have a few questions already that have been trickling in that we've been noting. So I wanna make sure that um, you all are being answered. So if you have any questions, again, make sure you add it to the chat and we'll try our best to get to as many as possible, okay? All right, so our first question um, comes from, I think, Samar Dahir. Um, Samar mentioned, do we have to use episode graphics if we use a brand or logo or use a guest photo? So Lisa, you wanna start? You absolutely don't have to. Um, I think that it's an opportunity. That's the way I look at it. I think particularly in the beginning, there's a lot of pieces to launch a podcast. So um, you may not feel like you have the bandwidth in the beginning, but it is an opportunity if you're having guests, because like I said, people do want to share what they're up to and it's a great incentive to share it if their photo is used. Um, it does not, you know, ideally it combines with whatever your typeface is, whatever the name of your podcast episode is, the way I did mine, um, the way print, did yours, you know, Breen did hers, it's a little bit different, but I think the more you can connect the dots, um, the more it allows people to want to spread the word. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, I am considered extra, and so I like to create <laughs> different graphics for every episode so that it then speaks to that content um, specifically. But um, with the quarantine couch, for instance, you know, we use photos of each of our guests, just like what Lisa mentioned, because one, you want to be able to cross promote, you want to be able to give your guests something that they can also market in return for you. Um, and again, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but on social media, when you're usually scrolling on a timeline, sometimes when you see something that looks a little graphic heavy or text heavy, you may not be as inclined to stop and look at it, opposed to a face that you might recognize, right? So let's say like if you're posting something on your page um, that you may have received from someone who you were on their podcast, um, typically if it's your face <laughs> on your page, <laughs> it's most likely going to get a lot more traction, a lot more engagement, um, and then you kind of hook them in, you tell them about that episode in your caption, and then you cross promote that way. Um, but I think that you can't really lose with creating some kind of graphic um, that can speak to that. So if you decide that you want your episode content or each of your episode graphics to, you know, not change and you just want to keep it your artwork and your podcast logo or graphic, that's completely fine too. Um, I think that social media can be such an instrumental tool that you can really, you know, really get into the weeds of creating graphics that are also on brand that may not just be, you know, that same thing each time. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, and then the question, follow-up question was where are the episode graphics used? So we talked about using them in social, of course, like, I mean, I use Lipson, so I'm importing them directly into Lipson as well. So when it gets, 
you know, spread out, it's already in there and connected to that individual episode. The other place I use them is I have a podcast player that I use on my website. I have a, a tab, you know, that's just for my podcast. Um, and then what happens is that's where I show my show notes. That's where, um, you know, I have the, the whole blog feature I use as the show notes and I have the individual graphics for each episode. So it's another reference point. It's also a hub where then people can come to my website, see what player, uh, what um, platform that they want to follow me on and then click that and go directly there. So it's just a nice kind of catch all for everything. So that's another place you might you know, want to be using them. All right. So um, Michael said, is having a different, well, we kind of talked about this a little bit, um, Michael, just having a different episode graphic um, in each episode, a good move or not. So I think we kind of talked a little bit on the pros and cons of that um, more so. So again, like to Lisa's point, having um, your graphic change for each episode according to your guest, right, to reflect that. Um, or to the content that you have. I think that it's, you know, up to you and kind of whatever you feel represents your brand and your podcast in the best way. Um, but again, I think that you want to have some kind of thread of consistency regardless, right? So whether the typeface that you use, um, your color scheme, um, any kind of like print or pattern, you know, you want it to be noticeable to the eye so that at any time that someone sees it, regardless if a picture or something is slightly different, you want it to still be on brand for you. So make sure that that is key and that's consistent. Lisa, do you I have, have any question? Is there a free version of Soundwise? Ramona asked that. Yes, I put that in um, the chat already. So um, Ramona, I just wanted to mention um, that on Soundwise, when you go to that link that I sent, um, you just have to scroll down, but it is free to use. They have two different versions. Um, Soundwise has a, you know, package plan, like a um, pro kind of version, but then they also have a free version where you can upload 15 to 30 second um, clips. And so you can do that either or. So yeah, it is free, um, but if you want to upgrade it, just like Canva, you can. Another question was, do you use visual brand guidelines? Um, from Ali. I, I do, um, but I, because I'm designing everything myself, I already know what they are. I don't actually create a, a specific uh, page for that. If I wasn't, a, you know, didn't have a design background and I was hiring somebody else to do it, yes, I would create brand guidelines very spelled out. I do like a one page PDF. Um, that's what I do for my branding clients so that they have it when they go to work with a web designer or they, you know, hire a social media person, right? So like having the brand identity guide for anyone who doesn't know what that means is it's just a really succinct recap of your colors used, your fonts used, um, the rules around the logo usage or the typeface usage that you're using for your podcast name, um, any kind of brand personality that you've developed and uh, just any other like photo or, or illustration guidelines you might have that are specific to your podcast or your podcast episodes. So it's just one distilled down in one place. So if you're using any other vendors that they're all on the same page and again, using consistency as the mantra here. Yes, I co-sign all of that. Um, brand toolkits are very important so that you can pass it along to anyone who needs it. And Canva actually has a feature on their platform um, where you can create like a brand guide. Um, you can also add people um, to a team that you create on Canva so that anyone's email address that you have, you can invite them in so that they can then see your brand guide. Um, and that again, like what we've been preaching the whole time, right? It's having that brand consistency. Um, so that's another way that you can kind of create something. Um, another simple way of making like a brand guide or a toolkit, brand toolkit, is just like a zip drive, um, a zip file that you can just have all of your different elements and kind of can package and send it along. But yeah, so we had another question from Lorena. Lorena said, what is the difference and the benefit to have a Facebook page in a Facebook group? Do you want to take that one or do you want me to? Sure. Um, so I 
like Facebook pages. Um, I think that Facebook groups, um, like one that we created on Friday for the Charlotte Podcast Festival is great. Um, and it's a great way to kind of centralize, I think, podcasters in a greater kind of um, network, in a sense. Um, it's kind of everyone kind of coming together with a common interest is how I would kind of look at a Facebook group. So let's say like my podcast, First Gens, right? It's about being a first generation American. Um, one of our another upcoming amazing speakers, her name is Rashmili, and Rashmili has a podcast called Carolina Desi. And with that podcast, um, she talks about her experience as a first generation American, um, but being an Indian American. And so it could be somewhat useful to have a Facebook group that has, you know, Rush Millie's um, entire cast and crew, my cast and crew, any other podcast that might talk about that subject matter so that we can come together, share resources, um, share different, you know, guests um, that they may be interested in and whatnot because we share that similar thread um, in commonality. But with a Facebook page, you want to use that to promote um, whatever your podcast is. I think that Facebook is always going to have relevancy within the social media networking scape. So I definitely would recommend that people not leave out Facebook. Um, I think that definitely Instagram, um, there's so many ways that you can visually kind of promote your podcast. Um, and then Twitter, you can talk about like your subject matter and you can do polls and you can do those different things. Um, I think those three kind of social media platforms would be the three that I would recommend for podcasts. Um, but yeah, that's how I would differentiate between a page and a group. We have another question and I'll let you look through and make sure I didn't miss anything. But Bria asked, how do you go about asking a guest for a photo for the episode graphic? I would prefer something more casual than a business photo. So that's great because that probably speaks to the visual tone that you're going for, Bria, with your podcast, which is fantastic. That's a great thing about um, establishing the look feel that you're going for. So I would just do in advance after you've already got them to agree to do the podcast with you. Um, I would write the request up. I would talk about um, the size. I would say, you know, high res or high quality. I would say I'm looking for a more casual photo, not a business headshot. Um, and I would just, you know, if there's anything specific, like for mine, I do ask people, I ideally don't want it against a white background, just plain, uh, like if they have something with a little bit of happening in the background, so it feels like a little more personal. Um, I don't mind if it's a business headshot, but I also ask for it not to be too busy if possible, right? Because, or like in a totally different color direction than I'm going for. Um, one person only had a black and white photo. And so I did end up using it for something. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things, ask for what you want. And then when they give it to you, you'll see what you can do with it. And if you ask them to go to the back to the drawing board, that's fine. Um, it's your podcast. You're trying to create the image that you want. So I would make sure and just ask for what you want. Anything else you'd add, Green? I think you nailed it on the head, and I agree with everything you said. <laughs> okay. So I think that this was This is why awesome. we're co-leading, right? <laughs> yes, that was it. So everything Lisa said. Um, someone else asked a question. Um, it was Lorena. Lorena said, I bought a domain, I bought my domain, but I don't have a website provider. Any advice on good and expensive ones? It's great you yes, asked that, Lorena. You know why? Because on Friday, October 23rd from noon to 1 p.m. You can catch my face again here with the amazing Jen Lang from WFAE and Chris Curitan. We're actually going to be doing a session about that. We're going to be talking about ways that you can promote your podcast using, again, social media and websites. So in that session, we're actually going to break down different um, website um, platforms, everything from your Weebly to your Wix to your Squarespace, um, all of that good stuff, and kind of talk about the pros, cons, our preferences, talk about pricing, um, all of that good stuff. I think that um, so many of these websites, and I'll let Lisa chime in too um, really briefly, it just really depends on um, what you're going for. And again, we're going to elaborate a lot more in that session, um, but you know, you have sites like Squarespace that have templates that 
are very like set in their structured template that you can't really customize as much as you could on like a Wix. Um, you have sites that are really stepping their game up right now. Um, what's really beautiful about all of these platforms is that you can um, connect and transfer a domain that you've bought um, whether it's on Google Domain, on GoDaddy, on any of these platforms, they also allow you to buy domains, but all of them will most likely be able to connect your existing domain to their site. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that other than I think the one thing that I would mention between the social media and the website, if you're just promoting your podcast, definitely use that name. If you have a business or a passion project and they're linked, you don't necessarily need a separate website or se separate social media account for everything. Uh, for example, I am not on Twitter much, so I do have just branding BFF for Twitter. I do not want to be on there with my business, um, but I do use my business page to host my podcast. I don't have a separate podcast page just for it. Um, I just have a page on my website. So just think about how you can streamline or simplify things for yourself. Um, if they are two very distinct entities or all you're focused on right now, you have a full-time job and you're, and you just have your podcast, then yeah, have everything under that name. But, you know, same with the social, just think about how they might be connected or how they might need to be very distinct. She nailed it. Nailed it again. Gave you even more gems packed in there. I hope you guys caught all that because that's super duper important and vital, um, especially about like your domain name and all that good stuff. Um, and so Lisa, another question that we have, um, this one came from Stefan. Um, Stefan said, what do you think about episode art in the RSS, um, RSS feed and a different one embedded in the MP3? And I'm trying to make sure that I'm understanding um, that question properly. Um, were you able to pull something away from that, Lisa? Um, probably the same question mark that you have in your brain. So I know the only thing I did for my RSS feed is I do everything in Libsyn. So mm -hmm. um, I do have a graphic that likely is the one used just for the RSS feed. Um, and then I do have individual images for the different episodes that I do as the mp3. So that's the way I do it. If there's another way to do it in your RSS where you can actually have both your your podcast itself and the episodes, I'm unaware of that. So yeah. somebody else in the in the group might have the answer to that. Right. Are, are um, you on the same page as me? Yeah, I think we're on the same page because I'm right there with you as far as having something like, you know, as your main art that lives, you know, that's connected to your RSS, um, that's then shout out to like every platform um, opposed to what you can upload for episodes, right? And you can actually change that and update that episode art like we were kind of talking about earlier. So Stefan, if you have any additional um, like elaboration that you'd like to kind of tack on to that question. We wanna make sure that we answered it properly um, and make sure that you had your question um, fulfilled. All right, so let's see. We have- I see a lot of people chiming in, which is really great, giving um, answers and additional resources, which is amazing. We love that. We do love that. I don't think we missed anything so far. I'm just looking back through. All right, Lisa, to clarify, you embed your podcast into your business page. I'm looking into doing a podcast. How does that help you to be more streamlined? That's a great question, Judy. So I ha I'd already have a business website, right? And then when I started my podcast, I decided that because my goal is to have my podcast support my business, um, that I would just have a player embedded onto my website. So it streamlines, streamlines it in the sense that I don't have a separate whole entire website that I need to keep track of just for my podcast. Um, of course, you don't have to have a website for your podcast, but it is recommended um, if you attended one of the other sessions, you'll, you guys will probably hear about it in uh, pre session again on Friday, but you know, you do get Google Analytics and different things by making sure you get more traffic if you're having it on a website, you're not just capturing traffic through the different um, podcast platforms. So it's another tool to drive people to your podcast. 
Um, let's see, but did that answer it? Let me just check. Yeah, that's how it helps me be more streamlined is I'm not managing two web pages because I already have a connection to my business page. If I had a podcast that was very independent of anything, then I probably still would have to develop a website just for it because I think it is a good tool for the long haul to get more traffic. Awesome. Okay, I think you answered Judy's question. She said yes. Awesome. <laughs> Great. All right, awesome, Judy. And I see that just like in the chat, we have, um, we're kind of going back and forth, Stefan. Um, Stefan and Jay are kind of chiming in. So Stefan's just mentioning, you upload the episode art to the host and that goes in the RSS, but you can also put images in the MP3 file, which gets shown, yes, if you use a player. Um, so kind of like a separate MP3 player. Um, usually people just upload the episode art to the host and do not add something to the mp3 yes mm. i actually do it to the mp3 and to the host, to the host. So. yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool there's different ways of approaching it i think that's the whole point is that um getting some different perspectives here is useful i think so too all right anyone have any other questions make sure you can put them in here I did different images, gotcha, Stefan. Um, but yeah, so I guess like Lisa, um, just in regards to just all the graphics and everything that you know, you've know you created and making that connection, um, what advice would you give to anyone who you know currently again has their business, um, they're starting, like they're thinking about starting a podcast and connecting the two, um, but they're just not necessarily sure like where to start. Um, is there kind of like, you know, a main or specific like tip or like nugget that you would share with them? I think the first thing is think about your goals. Like what is the role you want your podcast to play in relationship to your business or your passion project? I think just being clear, being strategic from the outset, being intentional is the biggest thing. And then think about what are the connection points that will help people know that there's a relationship. So for example, again, my podcast, I just put my business, my name and my business name real small. Like no one, you know, most people out there who don't already know me, that's not, not, not going to mean much to them. But when they start seeing things being reinforced over time, it helps build those connections. So the colors can be a connection. The style can be a connection. The, the, the wording can be a connection. But just think of where and how you want to reinforce it. Um, and I also think tone can be a, a part of it as well, like your vibe, your style, your tone, whether it's um, how you talk about things, the words you use. Um, I know a woman, and I hope I can hope I can say this here, um, you know, part of her brand for her business and her podcast, crap is an official word in her brand guidelines because that's, she's got that irreverent style. So, you know, thinking about your style, your tone is going to be important, particularly if it's connected to your business, because you do want to have it reinforce what you're already up to. Yes, yes. Uh, I love it. Brand voice is so important. Um, so I'm so happy that Lisa, you know, really tapped on that importance and how vital that is and how that should really be a representation of you, an extension of you. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're the one who's, you know, speaking. And so I do want to answer a question that Mitty had. Um, she just asked, let's see, like basically how often should yeah, how often do you feel you need to post um, to social media to support episodes? Um, and I know that, you know, we have such a great community here and people are already chiming in to answer um, Mitzi's question. Um, but just definitely you want to, you know, obviously lead up to your episode, right? So either the day that you're launching the episode, maybe a day or so after, I mean before, but then um, if you have any, again, sound bites that you can even use to tease that upcoming episode um, a day or so before the episode drops, 
that's a great way to engage people and really get them excited about what's to come. Um, but also to recap what has happened. So anyone who missed the drop to remind them to go and listen maybe a day or two after the episode drops. I think that it's really important to stay engaged with your um, network and with your audience on social media um, while you're promoting your season and just like while you're releasing episodes. Um, so I would try to almost create somewhat of a content calendar for yourself so that you can not feel overwhelmed when that time does come and you're just like pulling things. Um, try to give like, you know, different designated days for content, right? So whether it is, um, you know, how we do like Women Crush Wednesday or whatever, um, maybe make that Wednesday like a day that you give people tips that pertain to the subject matter of your podcast or your podcast season. Um, maybe Fridays are like behind the scenes where you show people, you know, the equipment you're using or just, you know, what it's taken to record. I think that if you can kind of outline it that way, it'll allow you to not again feel overwhelmed when you're creating your content. And you can kind of have something kind of downright, some, something that you can kind of stick with so that you can have that consistency and to really grow and engage your audience. That was like a long-winded answer. I hope that, that was a great answer helpful. though. <laughs> Let's see. Um, it's, you know, social media is no joke. It takes a lot of dedication um, and just having a team is so important. Um, it's so vital. So yes. Um, Thank you, everyone, um, so, so much. Um, Lisa, do you have anything else that you'd like to yeah, add? No, just um, I, it was fun collaborating with you on this. So I'm glad that um, people also have really chimed in to support us as we're leading this to um, add additional resources and help answer questions. You guys are amazing. Yes. Like, we are just... We're so appreciative of this community. Um, you know, it is the Charlotte Podcast Festival, but what you've seen, what we've seen is that there are people here in this chat, in these sessions that span from different countries all around the world, y'all. Like we have over 13,000 people have registered. Like it's amazing. And it's really beautiful how people come together and we're able to share, right? So if, you know, I'm talking, if Lisa's up here talking and she's sharing some knowledge and information, but someone else is in the chat and they have a question that you can answer, it's kind of beautiful to see that because I feel that we can all lend resources, information um, that's vital for everyone. So. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question. Um, another reminder that this session um, is being recorded right now as I speak. It's going to be sent to you this month. So again, make sure that you check your spam, your junk folder for all of that, um, just to make sure that you're good to go. Um, like I mentioned, this Friday at noon, we're going to talk about websites and social media even more. So make sure that you register for that session that we have coming up on Friday at noon. So we have, you know, so many sessions. Um, again, Lisa was in an amazing session just yesterday about just marketing and branding with podcasting. So we want to make sure that you continue to take advantage of these free, free <laughs> resources. It's crazy. It's free, but it's crazy good. So make sure you go to charlottepodcastfestival.com to learn more and register. Share your experience using our hashtag, hashtag CLT Podcast Fest on all social media. Remember again, you can get this t-shirt, you know, support us, you know, doing this free thing, you know, you can, you can give back too. So find out about the t-shirt on our website as well. And make sure that you join our virtual happy hour. It was popping on Friday. Like me and Joni were like up here, you know, sipping our water, sipping our stronger than water. We're all grown. It's fine. You know, doing whatever during the virtual happy hour. And it was, it was really awesome. It was just a great time where you can just meet other podcasters from all over the world, again, all over the world, and just kind of hear their two cents and really just, again, build up that support. So um, again, you can register for that as well on our website, charlottepodcastfestival.com. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Lisa Spear, for sharing all of your amazing knowledge, the My branding pleasure. queen she is. Um, so, so grateful for you and thankful for everything that you shared with us today. I'm Perrine DeShield. I hope you have a beautiful night. Thank you. Bye, everyone.